Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to another Morales video. Today, we are going to take a look to one of our latest endpoints. Get Chain Activity by the Wallet. This is our first truly cross-chain API because before this endpoint, you have to specify the network you want to get information from. But this endpoint allows you to get information from different blockchains at once. In this case, we have this endpoint which allows you to get the active chains for a wallet address. So basically, you can just put here any wallet address, select the networks you want to check, call the API endpoint, and you're going to get a result like this, the chain, and at the end, you're going to have a result like this, the chain, the chain ID, the first transaction this wallet made on that chain, and the last transaction this wallet made on that chain. In this case, I ask the request for Ethereum, Polygon, and Binance networks, and I have the information of all of those chains at once. Now, before we dip into how to implement this in code, and as you are going to see, it's going to be really easy. First, let's talk about what are the actual use cases for this endpoint. What's up, YouTube? My name is Vasily, your Web3 instructor from Latin America, Ecuador. I've been building on the space since 2020 with cool crypto projects. In my free time, I really enjoy singing and playing the guitar. And if the time is good, I like to go out and take some meditations. But enough about me. Let's go back to the video and start building. So let's explore some of the use cases of this endpoint. You can build comprehensive profiles of the wallet's owners so companies can offer more tailored services or recommendations. Also, it's really good for security analysis. For example, you have a sudden transaction on a chain that a wallet has never interacted with before could potentially indicate a security breach or suspicious activity on that wallet. So you can provide more secure tools to your users. Also, you can have a wallet age gating. For example, you want to restrict the access for those wallets which has been recently created and just allow the wallets with certain age. And finally, we have user onboarding. At the contrary of the wallet age gating, you can use the user onboarding in case that you have new wallet addresses so you can change your UX into your DAP accordingly. If there is a really old wallet, they are probably people who actually understands what crypto works, so you don't need to give them any tutorial, but if the wallet is new, you might provide more assistance and tutorial at the beginning when they are onboarding on your application. So with that said, let's put this into a real application. So as you can see here, Morales always provide you the API reference. So basically you can just select the programming language you want to use and then just copy and paste the code. So. Here in my Visual Studio code, I have here a simple Flask server, which has this endpoint get chains. And as you can see here, I'm importing .env for storing my Morales API key into a .env file. We store the private key into a .env file because having your private keys into your code constitutes a security risk. So before we continue, if you don't have a Morales account yet, this is the part of the video for you to hit pause, go to Morales.io, create your free account, and here on your admin panel, you are going to have access to your API keys. Now, take in mind that the free API key is really good for small projects and testing purposes, but if you really want to push your DAP into production, consider upgrading to Morales Pro. You are going to have more stream records, automatic group price for streams, and more requests. So please consider upgrading to Morales Pro in order to have the best experience out of the API. With that said, once you have your account, don't forget to go to your admin panel and get your API key. So here on my flag server, I'm going to add all the information I have here on the API reference. So first, let's set up the address. The address is going to be a string, and on this case, we are going to use this sample address. Now we need to fetch the URL. So let's declare that URL. URL is going to be equal to this one. And I'm replacing here the address I'm setting up here. Remember, you can just always go to the API reference. And as you can see here, I'm using the exact same endpoint, but in this case, just sending over the address into a variable. Now we need to declare the headers, the same as on the endpoint. And finally, we can just create a response. The response is going to be request.request.get request get using that URL. 
and then we can just return the response as a JSON. Return JSONify JSON lost response.txt. Now with this really simple flag server, we can go to our terminal and make it run. So Python server.py. This is going to give us an address. We can copy this, open a client such as Postman, paste the URL over here, and access to that endpoint. In this case, the endpoint is called get chain. Let's click on send, and this is going to return the same response as on the web page. You can notice that here we are not setting up any chain as parameter, so this is going to default to Ethereum. But let's suppose we want to add more chains. So let's go back to the code, and here with a question mark, we can say chains on the index zero. It's going to be equal to Ethereum, and let's say chains on the index one is going to be equal to polygon let's save this go back to postman send over the request again and as this is that we have both chains and as you can see here with just simple lines of code you can now mount your own server get that information out of the blockchain and use it into your dap so for example just to showcase how you can implement this on the front end I have here a simple web page on which we have a card rendered for each one of those. The way this works is just using Axios to connect to that endpoint into a use effect, which is going to update a variable, and then we render that variable on the front end as a card. Also, I included on this demo that you can use as reference a icon which is going to direct to that transaction hash for the first and last transaction on this wallet. And remember, combining this cross-chain API from Moralis and the applications I showed you at the beginning, you can fully customize the experience of your users. I hope you enjoyed this video so far. We are too close to the 100k subscribers goal, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Click on the bell so you are going to get notifications each time we publish a new video and I'll see you on the next occasion. See ya!